the grappling, likes to get in, likes to clinch. O'Driscoll, or Blaine McGill, a fan of the kicks, the hands, very accomplished K-1 striker. Yeah, it's straight away you can see the height discrepancy, Joe. Oh, a big front kick right away from <laughs> Jess. My goodness. Flipping heck indeed, Joe <laughs> Hogan. Liam Miguel now with the pressure against the cage. Has the, the head right underneath the chin, but that, uh, I mean, that might be... He yeah. could be standing up tall there on his tiptoes and it would still be underneath the neck. <laughs> he needs to slow that pace down a wee bit because that was... You know, if your opponent's coming out right off the bat, sprinting yep. at you with a with a jumping kick, you know you gotta you gotta calm things down a wee bit. Yeah, take, settle the pace, take control of the fight, take the fizz out of it just a little yeah, bit. Exactly, and this is how you do it. Interestingly, though, it's Miguel who's leading the grappling exchange here. Has a double underhooks. Simons is very good at these judo throws. There we are with the Uchimata off the cage. That's actually quite a low percentage um, takedown, so to get that, it's quite impressive. Paolo does a good job of conserving his energy, almost like a cobra. Conserves the energy and then just strikes. He's just wrapping the neck as well with his big long arms. You get a nightmare here for, for Michael. Like Finds himself in the mount, takes the back, and because of these long limbs. Yeah. May be able to sneak that underneath the neck of Blaine Miguel. I think he might, I can't quite see if he's underneath the chin, but he's putting a lot into this choke. May switch the palm to palm on it. Has the bicep grip. Miguel needs to fight the top hand. That's what he's trying to do. Paulo readjusts. I can't quite see if he's underneath the chin here, Joe. Yeah, I can't see either. Unfortunately, I can't see three people, Phil. We'll try a little harder, Joe. Come on. <laughs> He seems to be more so on the jaw as opposed to yeah. chip. If he cranks hard enough. Oh, uh, yeah, if he crank hard enough, he can get the top. But Miguel looks to be, you know, fight the hands the way he should. But it's that choking arm. He needs to control that choking arm. Paolo doing a good job. Staying calm here. Has the hooks in. Just waiting for Miguel to make a mistake and to sneak that arm underneath the chin. I'd like to see him land some shots a little bit here to to distract Miguel. Exactly, he's pretty relentless trying to dig his hands underneath the neck of Miguel. Switch to the body triangle with those long limbs. Miguel's nearly out here. And Doing a good Miguel job of turning in. On top. He's going to have to work hard to get past those long limbs. Of Coming up to the 10 second clapper. Paolo yeah. here making good angles on the ground, but it's kind of compromised by the cage. Very interesting first round. Oh, Miguel is fired up. He is fired up. He came out of, he, he finished the round the way Paolo started the round there. <laughs> Interesting to see if Paolo starts the round in very much the same fashion. Yeah, hopefully. Miguel's fired up. Miguel touching gloves with the referee there. By mistake. Oh, oh there we big are. head Ed kick. As you call it, Phil. Oh. 
It's deceptive Dude, dexterity what? from Miguel there. Do you know what Paul is doing? He's literally just running at Miguel because it ends up in a clinch, and this is where this is where Paolo wants to be. I guarantee he starts looking for the judo throw here. He seems to have an advantage when they're in this clinch, especially we can wrap his long arms around Miguel and kind of get Miguel to commit his hips and then there, next thing you know he's got the Uchimata, the full hip toss. And again, what Paolo's so good at is just waiting for that moment, not expending any unnecessary yeah. energy and then hitting the point. Yeah, look at him, he's just very relaxed here. He, he, I feel like he knows what he's trying to set up. Has the legs very close together. I'm not yeah. sure if Miguel was aware of that. But if you're Miguel, you had success with that big head kick. Yeah. Maybe try and create a little bit of separation, get the hands going. Yeah, I mean, I mean, more the way Paolo's legs are very close together here, you'd think it would be easy enough for Miguel just to drop down under the legs, but Paolo's got a, a double underhook over his legs, so that, that kind of stops that. So Miguel's doing a good job here of just trying to off balance Paolo. But as you say, Phil, I would actually just like to see him break off and, and get back to striking. You just feel at any moment that Paolo's going to say, he thought about stepping the leg over he there. He did. Miguel needs to be aware of that. He needs to be aware of his own hip position here. All he needs is one on the run, and then he's, he's on top, on the back. How much, the question has to be asked is, how much is this taken out of Glenn McGill? Yeah, Trying to get that taken out of him. Right? Mm. You know, Paolo's a big boy like this. Is, it's not going to be easy trying to wrap the arms around his legs. And it's six foot two, Paolo versus yeah. five foot nine. And I'm being generous when I say five foot nine to Miguel. <laughs> it's more of a tender bio five nine, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be having words with you after. Here, oh my, people can hear this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He is relentless like a dog with a bone on yeah. that leg. We talked about this earlier, where some guys will just kind of get tunnel vision and yep. try take down, take down, take down. I'm not really making any progress, but in actual fact, you should probably just break off and strike. Yeah, you know, break off, strike, and then get your opponent to commit, and then get back underneath again and get yourself in an advantage position. Here we go. Ooh, there's that big oh. shot over the oh. top. Miguel doing it, needs to circle off, can't stay against the cage. You know, that's probably the best hook, hook, head pick I've seen. <laughs> that's not a combination you see too often, but he can throw it. So, Joe, potentially are we looking at a round apiece here? Oh, 100%. Well, I'll well, never judge, say 100%, uh, well, but again... Judging uh, <laughs> by, by some of the judging we saw in uh, the last fight, yeah. I'm not going to say anything to 100%. Uh, oh, no, well, that's it. If I'm, if I'm playing a million pound drop and putting it on the ground, I'm not being made around. <laughs> he did eat a couple of big shots at the end, and that can take the wind out of you. Fired up, Blaine McGill is a yeah. dangerous Blaine McGill. <laughs> Tip that on the arms, but still could cause damage. Liam Miguel just loves to dip the head. Oh! There's that Luchimata. Lovely work. And it's knowing that. Oh. It's knowing that Miguel's going to come in close the distance and yeah. anticipating that. This is dangerous now for Miguel. He had his arm. Power He's giving up his back. Shades of the first round here. Yeah. Trying to get that rear naked choke seatbelt at the minute, switching it up, trying to sneak underneath the chin. He's on the jaw right now. This could still work if he has enough of a squeeze. Switches to it the It looks body. like it could be on the chin there. Miguel no. still on the jaw. Oh, Miguel trying to fight the top hand. Oh! That was a clutch finish. Beautiful work from Paolo. Oh, Absolutely man. beautiful. The anticipation from Paolo there is what was so impressive. End of the throw and then again methodically working for the choke. As I say, when I watch this guy fight, it's the economy of energy that's yeah. so impressive. Yeah. And still, cage conflict, welterweight champion, Jess Paolo, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner. After 55 seconds of the third round by submission, due to a rear naked choke.